Hello, welcome to this episode in our series. Um, in the previous video, I explained to you why you have to not track changes in your env folder or your virtual environment or whatever name you choose to call it and in this video i'm going to show you how to actually install dependencies into your virtual environment and then make it available for other programmers to restore or also install those dependencies when they check out your repo and they create a virtual environment on their own so basically we are wow i just said basically again <laughs> we are on the item number two that talks about creating a requirements.txt file once again this session is not a must know you don't need to understand this to be able to use flask at all git is an entirely different technology and it does something completely different from what flask does just that i i thought i need to show you this because mostly programmers use git or some other source code management tool to keep track of changes to their source file so if you don't understand anything from the very last video and this one and the next it is okay to skip them and then you can continue from where i actually start teaching how to build web applications with flask but it is my desire that you understand what is being taught here and um, it's going to help you in your journey so we have a virtual environment here i'm going to go to my terminal and i am going to activate the virtual environment so i would say source env bin activate and I'm sure by now you know this command of head. So by seeing the env here, it is clear that our virtual environment has been activated in this terminal session. Now, the question is how do we install dependencies into our virtual environment? Beautifully enough, Python has a tool called pip. And pip is what we use to install and manage dependencies in our project. If you are using Python 2, then you have to use pip. But if you are using Python 3, you use pip3. They actually do um, the same job. Pip3 is for Python 3 and pip is for Python 2. Now, if you want to install a dependency, all you have to say is pip install which is very easy to remember. You say pip install and then the name of the dependency. In this particular case, I want us to install flask. Once I do this, the tool which is called pip or pip3 in this case is going to contact um, a dependencies management site. It's called PyPy or there are different places where people keep their libraries now pip3 is aware of all these repositories where it is it is able to find these libraries that are open source so when you type pip3 install flask it is the job of pip3 to consult whichever service it has to consult and it's going to download those files and put them into your virtual environment so what it means is that now i have flask installed into this virtual environment and the good news is that the flask that i have installed here is not littering my global python installation it is only available in this virtual environment so if i go to my global python installation i cannot use flask and this is the beauty of virtual environments let's go ahead and install another um, library let me see and before we continue you can see this test in yellow it is not an error it is just um, a suggestion to you pip is telling you that there is a newer version of pip and you are using an older version so just upgrade to the latest version and the command to do that is pip install minus minus upgrade pip so i could do something like pip let me try pip3 install minus minus upgrade pip3 
okay it is saying could not find version that satisfied requirement pip3 let me see pip install minus minus upgrade pip i think um in python 3 pip has been mapped to pip3 so if i type pip it does it, it has the effect on um, pip3 because this virtual environment is actually python3 so i mean it is not an error but i just felt like i should let you know you don't have to worry about it it's okay if you don't want to upgrade but i mean if there is a latest version of something it is cool to have it because probably it solves some bugs in the previous version so that is that is the basic idea now i'm going to clear my screen and i will show you how to see all the dependencies that you have installed into your virtual environment to do that all you have to do is say pip list now i want you to note that i didn't use pip3 here i just said pip list i could also have done pip3 list and they are doing the same job as i told you in python 3 when you type pip3 and pip it actually refers to whatever pip has been installed in your activated virtual environment so as you can see we installed flask over here and what else did we install we didn't install anything okay so we installed flask here now i am listing the dependencies and i'm seeing click flask it's dangerous ginger markup safe pip setup tools and then workzec i have never known how to pronounce this but that is um, the server that flask uses when you are doing development now you ask yourself you installed flask how come you ended up with all these dependencies the beauty about pip is that it does recursive dependency management so when it is downloading a dependency for your project it also downloads the dependencies for that dependency what it means is that flask as a micro framework depends on this 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 and this and workzec whatever it is they call it so pip knows how to do recursive dependencies download it downloads the dependencies of your dependency otherwise if you get flask into your virtual environment flask is not going to work because its dependencies are not there and that is the beauty of pip so pip actually downloads your dependency and the dependencies of your dependency that is the recursive nature of pip let's install one more dependency even though we are not going to use it i'm just going to show you how to download dependencies so i'm going to say pip install pymongo and this is the library that helps us to communicate with mongodb using the python programming language so if i do let me clear screen and i'm going to do pip list and now you see that pymongo is also installed as a dependency in my project so basically this is the end of the video the goal here was to show you how to install dependencies and how to list them and i think it has been achieved if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments and um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel your subscriptions are very important to me they will keep me motivated so that I can keep doing these things. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.